how many people have they had down here in this black ops site um average person lasts about a month uh they go through they're usually close to full so 20 times uh five uh, uh about a hundred okay how many people are currently located in the basement other than the two security guards um, at the bottom, you should be able to see three, three tokens, uh, two orcs and a young human girl. Not see those then, tokens. I do not see tokens there, Sean. I might have to put my token there in order to see tokens. And no, I still don't see those tokens. They are hidden to me. That is very strange, because you should be able to see them. Hmm. Can you see the cameras? Okay, I can now see those tokens. All three of them from where, you're, from where you are? I can currently see the two orc males and the young human girl. there's some kind of lag because it doesn't show you anywhere near like downstairs hmm well I'm not I'm not I'm not actually downstairs I can see them now though oh okay yeah. can you see over here yes I can see over there you can see Karina yep I can see Karina and this other kid yep so that looks like uh, five people Five people, um, three of them are, have been processed, uh, which is essentially their way of saying they've drugged them up to the gills, uh, and, uh, they haven't really gotten much in the way of, uh, data from them at all. They're just sort of, uh, fucked over their brains now, and they're, well, well they're fairly docile, but, uh, other than that, they haven't got really much of any information from them. Um, it's, it's been pretty much a waste, but, uh, it, from his perspective, it's been fun, a fun waste. Okay. Um, what does, uh, what does the scientist, okay, what's his name? Uh, he doesn't have one because I, I, I didn't bother. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, you know, names and just some tons of blackmail information if it needs to be. Okay, um, what does the scientist know about the the dwarf currently down there uh what's her name how long have they had her down here what have they done to her what's her current condition and status what are their immediate plans with her do they have any long-term plans with her um essentially his boss james baker uh dumped her down here and uh told him not to actually fuck with her and he, he doesn't know much beyond that. Uh, she's in good condition. He's, he's kept her well. He hasn't done anything weird. Um, he just has been having her in what is essentially kind of solitary confinement. And that, that's it for the past since uh, early, mid-January. Um, is she kept sedated, unconscious, or just in solitary confinement? Nope, she's not kept sedated. She's been okay. a fairly compliable, I mean, hasn't really had much trouble. She's not, like, trying to escape or anything, but, I mean, it's, there's, there's nothing much to do, uh, so it, it's, can't imagine what she'd be trying. Um... So, after the security, after you give the, the login and the pass key and the elevator and land on the basement floor and the guard uh, reviews you at the, the basement floor once you get out the elevator, are there any other security measures beyond that security guard at the desk and the cameras? Um, this door right here. 
This is the door to all their sensitive information. Um, he doesn't really have much sensitive information, but I mean, it, it's in case they actually came across something of importance. Uh, it's biometrically locked, key to him only. Uh, the biometric lock, uh, key to him only. So the security guards, none of them would be able to get through uh, without him unless they somehow spoofed his biometric information. Right. They'd have to figure out some way to get his information and then use it. And I suppose my next question that is to you, Sean, uh, what does a biometric reader all entail? Like, my character has one and I've read them before in the book, but... It, how, how much of a combination of effects is it? Essentially, the the way they did it is all biometrics are created equal. Um, the way it's I basically to be describing them is depending on their rating. Like a basic rating one will be like a thumbprint lock. Uh, rating six will be handprint, eye eye scan, uh, okay. voice recognition. The so, whole work. So I guess my question then the scientist is how secure is this biometric thing? What does he have to do in order to get through the door? The whole works. It's voice print, six uh, fuck you hand door. Print, eye print. Okay. Pretty much everything but a tissue sample. I got it. And uh, is this door the same way? The door on the opposite mm, side? No. That door is... It's a little bit hard to tell because it was mostly going to be you going through it, but uh, dodge that again. Um, but this door here is from the elevator, the door you take past this, this security checkpoint. And then this is sort of the basic hall, and then this enters through this door to the main hall. So, uh, what does he know about this access? Like, is this an access the security guards use? Or, like, what is yeah, it? Yeah, that is the security guards. That is basically the primary way into or out of anything else. Okay. Uh, you go through here, and then if you're going down to the private room, go through here, going to see the test subjects through this door, and going to do anything with the test subjects is through this door and into the main hall. Okay, these two staircases lead down into the sleeping quarters for the guards, or one guard at a time, really? This, this door leads to the sleeping quarters. Okay. And then going through here and through this lock door, and then down here leads to the, uh, the personnel, uh, all the files, which he doesn't have much of anything. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, theoretically, if you're getting off the elevator, you could go through this door and then go through this door without dealing with the biometric locks. Right. So what do the security guards use? Do they have a key set? Do they have their own biometrics? Does he know? They have a pistol and usually leave the doors unlocked all right <laughs> they, they really count on that they really were just counting on this place being hidden right of and course. no one's seeing it absolutely and uh, um, in the six months they've had they've gotten kind of lazy like originally it was yeah it was locked 24 7 and they each had they had locks and they had to use them and but then it's like hey fuck it Dude, no one's coming down here about a three months ago they really got into it and basically the only thing that's left locked is that biometric lock in the elevator itself okay um in that case my next question then is to uh what does the scientist know about james baker how much inf who is james baker how long has he been working with james baker what has james baker done is James Baker someone important and influential in Horizon, or is he like a hidden black ops guy too, completely shady? Um, from what he knows, James Baker worked in some kind of uh, military or paramilitary something with, uh, he thinks it was Ares, but he's not sure. That sort of rumor though, uh, the only real concrete information he has on him is, oh, about two years ago is when uh, he got picked off the streets, uh, he being um, 
the scientist, got picked off the streets and hired by Horizon for his good, um, ooh, his good work with uh, chemical compounds and uh, uh, tweaking people's brains. And then James Baker picked him up and that's pretty much the details he knows from that it's just sort of been black op to black op sort of thing nothing really learned or nothing really gotten uh, uh, just sort of uh, from the scientist perspective just sort of having fun torturing random people's brains so if this entire sort of experiment was to like uh, discover technomancers and pinpoint their weaknesses uh, how many technomancers does the scientist think they've actually found? Like, how many successes were there in these experiments? Well, the main purpose of the experiments was to determine their reaction to magical uh, drugs, primarily. Um, this particular one. It, they didn't... Some had some different reactions, but for the most part it was uh, uh, all along the same lines as what you'd expect. Um, from there was just applying the same chemical compounds which he doesn't know anything about the details of that uh, apparently Horizon uses to uh, sedate certain people certain important people and then turning them back over to James okay what drugs do they use are they on the market drugs are they experimental Horizon drugs does he even have names for them for his testing or Horizon's drugging for his testing purposes, we'll go with For that. his testing, it's been all over the board. It's just been basically, uh, it's all been magically active drugs, all awakened drugs, because that's what the testing was about. How do they uh, react differently to awakened uh, things? Uh, he's used recreational drugs, uh, tempo and uh, uh, things like that, and uh, your more uh, normal uh, sort of battle oriented stuff like immortal flower and then seeing if hey do they have the same you can chop off a limb and it'll grow back immediately property things like that so uh let's say let's say for whatever let's say the spider you know we have the spider paying attention and there's a security at the desk say there's a say a break-in somehow occurred uh someone managed to find the black op site someone managed to infiltrate the elevator and arrive at the basement in front of the security guard do they have like any sort of sensors or alerts any buttons they can act out a quick call number like what sort of does he know what kind of react does he know what the security guards can do in the worst case scenario all three of them can in the worst case scenario blow the entire place up there's there's bombs like all over the place like literally every single wall is just embedded with uh, some kind of uh, uh, explosive um, so worst case scenario they just they all have the switch and they just hit it and the entire place goes up that said none of them really none of them really want to do that uh, well as far as he knows um, the the mages are the security guards don't um, the mage and the not mage security guard and he certainly doesn't want to blow the whole place up if things go bad that said if cornered yeah he'd probably do it but uh last case scenario uh worst case scenario that that's it though okay does he know whether the spider who watches the cameras uh has access to that switch that will detonate the entire site um, the spider is actually just an agent. It's it's. Um, the IC. A, it's not an actual yeah, person. IC. Okay. And the IC, as far as he knows, is not programmed to somehow respond to some sort of crazy kill switch and blow the entire place up. Yeah, the ice doesn't have anything. That's entirely on a separate thing, which is okay. straight up just tied to his comm link. All right. Um... Okay, so in the worst case scenario, the site would be blown up. All right, uh, going through this information, uh, Aaron Cripson, you have any other information that uh, I would sculpt into questions here for the scientist that your characters would care about? 
Uh, I think you yeah, pretty much actually, covered everything. Uh, do they store any data on site? We could uh, get a whole lot of pay data from here. His, his work that he's been doing is, ugh, it hasn't been much of anything worth anything. Okay. It's just been all confirmation of, hey, they respawn the same way to magical drugs that everyone else does. So there are, there are like data servers containing his experiments and like the results of them, but it's him just, you know, torturing and experimenting with these people and uh, charting the success rates of drugs on them. Yeah. And then comparing right, them to baselines. Uh, what is their stockpile of awakened drugs like? <laughs> I was thinking about that. I, I'm not sure whether that is. <laughs> um, what basically uh, all sorts of valuable, easily fenced things. Right, that are restricted and forbidden. Uh, that's a worthwhile question the true sayer will ask. Like, uh, where is where are those drugs kept? And do well, they have other uh, high-end medical supplies? Well, high-end medical supplies, they have... I mean, the walls in the place are actually kind of rusty and, like, they're, they're actually just shitty. The whole place is sort of just shitty. That's why he doesn't like going down there. Um, medical supplies, uh, they've got, like, a few med kits and basic and absolute rudimentary stuff to keep people from, you know, dying if they cut themselves on something but that's about it as for awakened drugs uh well until uh, what was it about a week ago ish not even that a uh, few days ago when uh some weird thing started happening they got told to pull the plug they had a good stash but uh when uh weird things started happening they moved the drugs out and uh shipped them off and with the first person so They've got really nothing left. That's fine. I mean, he's got he's got a few vials of something around, but he doesn't even know what that is. All right. Um, say, how long ago was the project plugged pulled? Um, it would have been the first day you were seen. Okay. So the reason that they're pulling the plug on the project is a direct response to the watcher. Of being obliterated. The Watcher was obliterated, and then there was a bounty hunter that took a class, uh, and there it was just a normal routine, instant inspection, but it got flagged for some reason, and James apparently s panicked and decided to pull the whole thing. Okay, this James Baker does the, uh, okay, this is it's all rumors and shadowy shit. The scientist, where does how does the scientist get in contact with him? Um, for the when they first met, James actually met him a few times in person. Um, but since then, it's been mostly through an intermittentary. Um, uh, let me check his name real quick. An intermittentary named Lance Erickson. A way too posh uh, guy who apparently works for James but uh, does it off the books or something because he's not actually a Horizon Corp employee. He uh, works for, well, he doesn't know who he works for. It's just sort of, uh, he does something but he's not Horizon. Okay. The uh, the picture of uh, James Baker that uh, that the scientist has in his head that's of the Mister Johnson who gave us this mission back in January. Um, no, that Mister Johnson was someone that worked for James. Okay, he's not Lance Erickson. Um, no, and that okay. is, that Mister Johnson was not Lance Erickson either. All right. Looking around in his head. That Mr. Johnson, he has no idea who he is. All right, and he doesn't know what happened to him either. Okay, that's cool. Uh, does he know who James Baker answers to? Does he know that far? Uh, okay. No, he doesn't. Okay. <laughs> does he know anything about the rumors uh, surrounding the Horizon CEO? <laughs> <laughs> 
He knows he doesn't give a fuck. All right. <laughs> figured since I had him here. Uh, Aaron, you have any other things that pop into your head? Does he know what specifically the guards are armed with? Uh, what weapons do the guards... You, I know pistols were mentioned. Uh, like, it'd they... be important to know if they have right. some type of, like, uh, like a pepper punch grenade or something. Right. I suppose, do they have any drugs or, like, electricity? Are they armed with just stunning weaponry in case one of these individuals gets free? Or is it all lethal? Their armaments include... Um, what they normally carry on them is their, uh, their glasses with their comm links and smart linked uh, Ares Predator. Um, just sort of run-of-the-mill pistol, nothing fancy about it. Um, other than being smart linked, they uh, have a, a couple of uh, Izomi Aphrodite submachine guns, which include a micro grenade launcher. But those things are locked up tight downstairs. They haven't touched them since uh, probably the first week of being down here, nearly a year ago. Ooh, mint condition fat loots. Uh, uh, Cody's question is going to be, uh, is there any way to con for people downstairs to immediately contact uh, Horizon, the Greater Horizon, or is it actually just, uh, maybe this asked before and I forgot, but uh, is it cut off entirely from Horizon as a black op? Uh, no, they can call back up. Uh, when they sign in and uh, call the elevator and go downstairs, they lose connection. But once they're back downstairs, they can use uh, their uh, uh, terminals. That said, all of their terminals are hardwired. No wireless connectivity because, well, they're dealing with technomancers. That makes sense. I would just, uh, uh, Coyote's concern is, of course, if they go in there, they want to get everybody as quickly as possible before they can get the message out. Where is their Nexus hosted? Uh, if we wanted to erase all signs that we had been there, um, where would we need to steal a hard drive from? Um, that would be down in his lab, the biometrically locked one. And uh, down in his lab, that's where the personnel files are located, on or down the staircase? Yeah, that, that would include his, his files, his ex experiment files, all any file stuff that's important goes down there. Okay. Is there a black box for the site in the event that the self-destruct is activated? Um, no, if the self-destruct is activated, the entire thing's supposed to wipe itself. And that would take out the uh, the flight school as well. Like, how big would the explosion be? Does he know? Oh, uh, he actually doesn't know that. He's not explosive spec expert, and the thing was set up before him. Um, okay. He know that it may rock the building. Like, uh, it's it's not something to toy with. It, it's it's gonna kill everyone down there. Okay. Um, but uh, he doesn't know whether it'd sink the building. He doesn't think it'd blow it off the top. I mean, they don't have enough explosives for that. But uh, what else? He doesn't know for sure. Okay. Uh, how is that lab locked? I mean, what kind of biometric security is it? The entire, the full works. You need uh, eye print, voice print, thumb print. All right. Everything that would be encompassed, and I assume a rating six biometric lock. Or something like yeah. that. Okay, yeah, I was just making sure it wasn't a simple eye and thumbprint type thing. Yeah, and it's just that one door. Yeah. It's just the uh, the one door. The one door that if you click on the doors, it's the door labeled command. Okay. If you log into the uh, Nexus with his ID, do you have sufficient user rights to su shut down the spider agent? Um... He'd have to do that from inside, from past that biometric lock. He'd have to do that from the terminal itself. Uh, the other terminals don't have uh, anything more than basic security rights. Um, the one out front doesn't even have any rights at all. It's just cameras. Um, 
the ones down in their private rooms have some basic security rights. They can like give the uh, I specific commands, but they can't really uh, or certain pre-designated specific commands, but they can't really give it um, any detailed commands or change its basic behavior. Uh, what is the door biometrically locked door made out of? Uh, all the doors are heavy steel. Okay, I just, uh, h how thick? You thinking thermite? What? Um, well, he has a cutting torch, and I just wondered how fast that would be. But yeah, thermite, if he doesn't um, have it, but that'd be useful. About a foot thick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, a cutting torch won't won't do that. Okay. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much every wall and door is about a foot thick of solid steel. All right. Is the scientist the only individual he knows of who is approved to go down here and leave the premises once he's done? Other than, you know, James yeah. Baker, his superior, or whoever. James Baker doesn't even... Well, I mean, he's be allowed to, but he doesn't have the actual technical uh, security privileges and okay. things like that already lined up. Other than that, he has to sign on to everything um, that's, that's done down here. Okay. The, the pass key, the login and pass key that the scientist uses on the elevator... Would that still work without subscribing to the Nexus? Nope. You'd have to go through the first Nexus. You'd have okay. to get through the. Um, you'd have to get through the the first in signed into the first Nexus using his first security, and then going through the second one doing his uh his second security code, which is uh which when he sends that he uses a stealth program for it. Okay, but you wouldn't, but as you said before, you wouldn't need his comm link. You would just need to know those security accesses that he used, which I do because I'm in his head. Yeah. Okay. Um, with being in his head, you can go ahead and just write down all his password information. All right. Um, well, I'll pitch the, uh, the questions back to uh, you, Aaron, and Cripson if your characters come up with anything that True Sayer can't think of. Of course, we're nearly six hours into the session so if you want to uh, pack up and then uh, try to get rolling on how we're going to break in take the girls so we can actually finish the session yeah um, I'm voting for that I do have a quick question for Sean though um, foot yep. thick I'm just going to guess that might be a little bit much even for a mono monofilament chainsaw or it might take forever in a day rather. Um, I don't know what if I, I actually can go ahead and look that up. Uh, barrier. Yeah, let's see. 335 is where I'm at for the chainsaw, and it's not. I'm not sure. It says I can cut through doors, but this is a foot, foot a steel foot thick, which. Um, does it give any damage for it? It per does. minute, Hold it on, gives see. a gives a damage of five p and an AP of minus two. Uh, when used against barriers, double its damage value. Ten p. So, yeah, it the door will have an armor of eight and a structure of nine. The armor, the armor value would be reduced uh, with the AP of minus two, and it would deal 10p right, so to the structure. Right. So it'll cut through, uh, I forget what the structure, I believe that's per inch. So it'll take about, uh, oh, why can't I do math now? It'll take like half a minute to, to get uh, just a basic hole into it. Doable if you go for the bolts. Right. Or the hinges. 
All right. Well, I think that might be what Coyote is going to try to do then. All right. Um, um, I do have a question. Okay. I know that. Uh, I know that um, he doesn't have the rights to shut down the agent. Does he have the rights to uh, shut down cameras? The security guards and the security their security stations. Or are you talking about the... Era was referring to the scientist. Science. Or does everything have to be done from that terminal? Yeah. As, essentially, there's three terminals that you can... that they can use. The first is... This thing right outside the entrance is just cameras. You, It doesn't even have controls. It just displays all the cameras. Then, inside their private quarters, there's a terminal down there that, um, mind you, their terminals aren't assigned to them, they're not like, uh, they have login information, but they leave them logged in all the time. They, they've gotten kind of lazy about it. Um, that will give, uh, I'm sorry, uh, what was the exact question of what can it do? Aaron just wanted to know whether the scientist had the ability to turn off the cameras so that we oh. wouldn't have to be seen by the cameras as we're going into the building. That's all. Or even the, just the one camera in front of the uh, elevator. The one down here, you'd have to get down here already past the camera to turn it off. And that is a hardwired connection. Um, he can't do that from the outside. It, uh... It won't, uh, it's programmed not to, uh, accept outside connections or connections through the upstairs comlink to change camera or any settings at all. That, so. uh, that is hackable. So if you were to hack through for an administration account for the downstairs nexus, you could do it. Um, and he knows that perfectly well, but you'd have to actually hack through a, a whole new administration account because his normal account to call the elevator is not an administration account. So it's basically get an admin account or the spider will see us as we come out those elevator doors. Right. That said, the Again, security sorry, is not a Spider, it's ice. Right, it's the just an agent. agent. Th there, there's oh. no actual hacker spider overseeing the network. It, there's just right, an agent I, I to protect that. the matrix network. So, what does that uh, agent actually detect? Like, uh, what are its parameters? It does shit all. It, oh, so it's, it's basically there. just there for matrix combat? Yeah, it's, it's there so that their elevator doesn't get shut down. Um, and so that if things go bad, if anything goes wrong with the matrix, like uh, anything hacks into it, it's supposed to delete all the files, and that's about it. Oh. Well, all right then. Okay. So, um... So I was worried it would raise the alarm if, uh... No. No. Yeah. It doesn't look like that's a concern. All right, then. Uh, I believe that takes care of the extent of it, so we can get on the session. I guess a question, then, after I'm uh, busy plundering this guy, and, you know, I'm talking about the information while I'm in his fucking head, and they're giving me questions. Uh, since I, I, I know these assholes have, a, have bug con links, I, I guess I'll ask aloud, Mr. Johnson, do you want this guy? Uh, you've got ECM on. Uh, I, I don't know if you programmed it to let comms through. Well, we obviously had the talk since uh, we're coming through. We were coming. Yeah, he may as well just. Yeah. Say he hears. It's fine. I mean, it's I thought it. about that at the beginning. Whether we just to let him hear us question. It's him, yeah. We got to get on the why? session. It's immaterial. <laughs> Not important. Um, <laughs> well. He'll, I'll give you as much as if you didn't want him to hear any of that, he didn't hear any of that. Because okay. Because your place is secure enough to go ahead and do that. Right, that's true. Uh, in that case, he didn't hear any of that. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I'd actually, in that case, uh, Trusair would walk outside, say, come on, let's walk outside. And um, 
and uh, he would provide, uh, Trusair would provide a brief explanation of everything that was garnered from the scientist's head, and particularly given how much they've delighted in, like, you know, torturing and experimenting these people and uh, going over drugs and uh, the information about who's been responsible for keeping Karina down there. And he'll ask Mr. Johnson, like, obviously you, you're going to provide the dose to mind wipe this guy. Do you want him? Does your family want him? They seem pretty... Your uncle was it in particular? Look, was looking for blood? Do, 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 do you want him? <laughs> Um, the response over the te uh, hold on. Okay. How do you contact him? Um, well, I figured we're walking outside of my warehouse. Twitch and, uh, Coyote still have their fucking disposable comlinks that have the virus in them. And so I, Truesayer was just going to begin talking and assume that he was listening, though he might be asleep. Okay, um... When you do that, uh, you'll get an immediate text from that unknown number saying, rather not kill anyone. Or it says, I'd rather not kill anyone with emphasis on the I. Okay. With so, that, Coyote will frown. All right. In, in, so uh, in that case, uh, Tricera pitch back. So is there anything particular you would like done with him, Mr. Johnson? Or is that our discretion? Unless you'd rather otherwise uh, leave that to your discretion, you get the text. Okay. Okay, so we can go back inside. Uh, and back to the guy in particular. I'm sure they just a shrug, like, we can mind wipe him. Uh, we can, uh, say, d does he live in a corporate uh, arcology on uh, corporate soil? Corporate citizen? Um, yeah. Okay. I would say, you know, could have been generous enough to, like, deliver him to where he lived, but I'd be worried about getting seen by too many cameras. Well, here's the other thing. Coyote. The uh, perfect time to go in there seems like it's uh, at night when he's normally due to arrive. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely. We would, uh... And we don't want him arriving at the same time. Right. I, I, right, and say, and, and Kaido, you'll say that segues with my uh, way of mind wiping too, and he'll <laughs> pull out his gun. <laughs> Trusair will frown. It's not necessary to kill him. Oh, I was gonna wait till we got outside. I won't mess up your house. Trusair snorts. <laughs> uh, and says, "It's." We can have the mind wipe drug. He won't remember anything. We could leave him. We could leave him naked in the toxic zone for all I cared. Killing him, however, that's bad business. I'd rather not do that. Coyote will shrug, holster his gun, say, "All right, whatever helps you sleep at night." <laughs> not about sleep. It's about business. You go around killing people, you're going to attract a lot more attention. Mega Corps like Horizon, they understand the biz. They don't like it, but sometimes losses happen. You go around hey, and start uh, killing all their employees, they get a lot more offended. So here's an idea. How about we disable his internal comlink, throw him in the trunk of his car, and uh, set it to go somewhere, and uh, automatically pop the trunk after a certain amount of time. Say Mexico. 24 hours from now. I mean, Mexico doesn't exist anymore, but as technology does. No, I mean, just <laughs> yes. Yeah. Drive him out into who knows where. Maybe he loops around the highway a dozen times. See, that's what. How how would we go about like the process of like disabling his internal comm link? Would we just have to keep the jammer with him, or what? Yeah, I'm not really sure how that how the disabling of internal comm links works. Well, it's actually internal, so to do that properly, you've got two options. One, the get a knife and poke at it, or two, take him to a doctor. 